Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about using our virtual Dyna software in conjunction with our S Manager software when we're doing our tuning. So when we want to make wide open throttle pools, we're going to be capturing our data in our S Manager software. We're going to be playing back that data, reviewing what's going on um, as we're making our tuning changes. Now we can use those same data logs, export them out in a .csv format, and then import them into our virtual dyno software to actually measure the horsepower and torque that our engine's making. So we're able to measure changes in our spark timing or able to measure uh, going in and moving our VTEC point around. We can use this in our tuning process. It's pretty accurate as long as you're following along with what I'm gonna be showing you in this video, as well as what I've already covered in the EFI Advanced specific video for the virtual dyno. We're gonna have a lot to cover, so let's jump in this video so we can check all this out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're gonna be taking a look at working with our virtual dyno software to produce the horsepower and torque our engine's making at any given time during our tuning process in conjunction with using the S Manager software. So we have the ability to capture our data logs in our S Manager. We can obviously review the data logs and we went through all of that in the training course, but we can take things a step further by exporting the data out of our S Manager and importing it into the virtual dyno. That's gonna allow us to capture the channels that we need and plot them in the virtual dyno to produce that horsepower and torque. Now, this is extremely useful if we're trying to figure out our spark timing. If we're adding some more spark timing in, we wanna see if we're getting gains. We would use a chassis dyno normally to figure that out, but uh, with the virtual dyno, as long as we're consistent and following along with what we saw and learned about in the EFI Advanced video that was the overview of the uh, virtual dyno software, we're gonna be able to produce pretty accurate results. Now, in this particular video, I'm gonna be showing you how to export your data log out, how to go in and, and, and compare two different runs uh, for spark timing and boost changes, um, so you can kind of see the cause and effect, how to go in and actually compare your low and high cam torque curves to figure out where your VTEC endpoint is going to be at, as well as taking a look at a data log that you probably wouldn't wanna use, um, so a bad example. Um, and not being able to, to utilize that. So let's jump in here right now and start to talk about this and look at the process. So if you go up in here to the graph, I actually have some data log already loaded into my software. Let's take a look at the low and high cam pools first and be able to determine the VTEC engagement point because that's gonna be really useful regardless if you're force induction, if you're naturally aspirated, it's always something that can be a little bit confusing. Now I've pretty extensively covered how to determine the VTEC engagement point without a chassis dyno based on your data logs, looking at your injector pulse width and comparing it when it switches from the low to high cam. As long as your air fuel's dialed in on your low cam, dialed into your high cam, you should see a minimal change in injector pulse width. That's gonna be indicating your VTEC point is pretty close, but we can graphically plot everything and figure it out. So right now I have